Linux ransomware is a thing, ProtonMail gets hit with a denial of service attack, the JP Morgan hackers have been arrested, and someone stopped the NSA from collecting phone call data. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Hello world, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for November 11th, 2015. Thank you to our veterans for your service. ThreatWire is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Quite a bit has happened this week, starting with some ransomware for Linux. Ransomware is a type of malware that is used for a hacker to hold data hostage until a target pays up, oftentimes in Bitcoin so that it's an anonymous transaction. A new strain of ransomware found by Dr. Webb and called Linux.encoder.1 will target Linux websites and servers by holding the data in files for said website or server hostage until a ransom of somewhere around one Bitcoin or, at time of recording, $353 is paid to the hackers so that they will give the target back their access. Access. Unfortunately, like many other attacks on sites, this is done through vulnerable website plugins and third-party software. Linux Encoder 1 requires root access and encrypts the home, backup, and system folders for a server as well as important files. An RSA 2048 key will store AES 128-bit keys that are used to encrypt all the local files, and a private key pair is needed to decrypt the files. Directions are sent to the target as a readme.txt file. Now, once paid up a server's file are decrypted, and at time of writing, webmasters are reminded to back up all pertinent data for their sites and servers, as there is not a fix. ProtonMail is a Switzerland-based provider of end-to-end -end encrypted email, which just days ago fell prey to a denial-of-service attack, or a DDoS for short. The attack started November 3rd and has since been restored. The DDoS was similar to many other attacks going on in Switzerland, however, by the second phase, this was no longer the case. They discovered that this was done by two different groups. ProtonMail then believed this to be done by state-sponsored attackers given the extremely sophisticated capabilities, and one group, called the Armada Collective, has been named as involved as well. Now, during their first discovery of the DDoS, ProtonMail decided to pay out 15 bitcoins, or nearly 6,000 bucks, to the criminals to stop the attack. Unfortunately, paying the ra ransom obviously didn't stop the DDoS, and it continued for six whole days by the second group, who also ended up taking down many other companies as collateral damage until it was finally mitigated. Now ProtonMail is working with the Swiss Government Computer Emergency Response Team, or GovCert for short, and the Cybercrime Coordination Unit Switzerland, or CYCO for short, on a criminal investigation into the attack. Now, since implementing a long-term fix is really expensive, ProtonMail has started a crowdsourcing campaign to raise funds, and the link is below in the show notes. JP Morgan Chase Financial Institution was one of nine targets in a hack during 2014, all the way from 2012 to 2015 to be exact. And as of earlier this week, the hackers that may have been the culprits have been charged with 23 counts in the largest hacking case of financial history. Currently, reports are estimating over 100 million customers have had their data stolen for this hack, and the hackers made about a hundred million bucks as well. The three hackers arrested include Gary Shallon, Ziv Orenstein, and Joshua Samuel Aaron, indicted on hacking, identity theft, securities fraud, money laundering, and so much more. According to Hacker News, a man named Anthony Mergio was also arrested in relation to this hack as well. Now, brute force, social engineering, and the heartbleed vulnerability were all used in this attack. No surprise there. Lastly, the NSA has been ordered to halt their phone data collection by U.S. District Judge Richard Leon, which applies to Larry Clayman, an activist who brought a civil liberty case up against the NSA for their collections. Now, while the NSA is set to end collections on November 29th anyway, so the halt isn't that surprising, it is important and it's significant. This may set a precedent for future cases about privacy and government spying and, hey, a little something called citizens' rights. Now, last off, I just want to say, hey, thank you. Thank you, patrons, for making the show possible. Share it with your friends or on your favorite social network. I want to see the show get to three times per week, and with your help, we can make that actually happen. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support us, and also where you can hit us up with pictures of your adorable fur babies. They don't necessarily have to have fur, but they're really, really cute. I like the kitties. Those are some of my faves. But I like the dogs, too. And yes, I love animals. 
and yes, I said aminals. <laughs> Let's work together to get ThreatWire up to our next goal, where we will release an RSS feed and another episode every week. You can find all of our episodes linked to our social networks and other ways to contribute at ThreatWire.net. And speaking of social networks, we are linking to all the stories that we couldn't get to this week at Facebook.com slash Technoless, which is Hack5's Facebook page. With all that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.